Hey everyone, uh, here tonight, uh, we've got a special guest on board. We've got um, Jim Penman, who's the CEO, uh, founder, is that the right word, Jim? Yeah, that yep, too. CEO, founder of uh, Jim's franchise, I would say it is now. What do you actually call the group now? Jim's group. Uh, Jim's, Jim's group. Mowing, Beautiful. cleaning, kiss and tag, yep. fencing, the rest. Yep. The works, which was started in 1982. Um, our audience, we've got quite a big Australian audience. We've got a lot of Victorians on board as well. So a lot of people have seen you uh, out and about in the news over the last few days. Yes, I was I just mean. going to mention a few of the things you guys do. So from what I could see, we've got cleaning, fencing, handyman, mowing, which people know Jim's mowing, pest control, antennas, dog wash, hazardous materials. There was a lot more there. They were the ones I listed down. Um, did you want to just have a quick intro about what you're, what's happening at the moment? Obviously, there's a lot happening in the media. Um, there's a lot happening in business around Victoria right now. And I just wanted to get your opinions and thoughts on what's going on right now. Well, we saw the, um, the guidelines put out for stage four, and we were pretty relieved. They're very sensible guidelines. They were, you know, yeah. they looked at the whole areas of business and stuff. They're very elaborate categories, and they clearly saw there were certain areas that were low risk, like mowing and stuff. They also made it clear that if you are a sole operator working by yourself, that was fine, no matter what you were doing. So there's a really detailed series of things. And we thought, that's fine. We can live with that. We, we're very COVID safe. We train people. And our, yep. obviously, our work is very, very, very low risk because we have almost no contact with customers for most divisions. Yep. And then the Premier goes on national television and, and he puts a steamroller for the whole thing. He says, oh, no mowing, no cleaning. Now, what's going on? My view is what happened is that he didn't have a clue about what his own departments were doing. He just didn't yep. know. He spoke completely off the cuff. And being a man of politics and not a man of principle, rather than yes. simply say, sorry, guys, I got it wrong, he said, no, okay, look, I could either go back on my word and say I made a mistake, or I could toss a few tens of thousands of Victorians out of work for no reason. Let's go for the tossing of Victorians out of work. It's a stupid, senseless thing to do. I object yep. mightily. And the problem with it is, it's not even clear. When they did it in New Zealand, they just simply said, you're all shut down. These are the written guidelines. We followed that. So yep. what I did is say, look, you're the Premier, you're not even sticking to your own guidelines, which are legally binding on business. Yes. And that's what, that's what I said to the media. I didn't say I wanted to defy the guidelines. I said I want to obey the guidelines. If the guidelines change and we're legally obliged, then we will go along. Now, I might disagree but I won't break the law. Yeah. Now, what happened is the franchisees, I told them the guidelines were clear, the legal, we got lawyer's advice on it. I told them that the, the, the case is clear. And so they, um, and, and, but some of them said, oh, okay, what if, what if, you know, the premier said this, what if we get fined? And I said, look, you won't get fined because I, because we're legally. We're doing the right thing. Yep. We're doing the right thing. If you do, I'll pay your fines. And that wasn't an invitation to break the law. It was a statement that by giving that advice, they'd be keeping the law. Yeah, for sure. Because we noticed it as well. We've got a legal team at the moment looking at the legalities of the lockdown overall, the impact on business, the impact on families. We've got people writing affidavits talking about the hardships they're going through for all the different businesses that are getting closed down. And we've got the facts and figures coming out about how many infections there are, the rates and how many deaths have been for such a draconian lockdown. Now, mm. we're similar to you that we don't want people going out and breaking the law in regards no. to masks or in regards to business, but we've tried to get in touch with, there's um, a group, they're following the Essential Services Act from 1958. And there's a group of politicians that are part of um, putting that together and giving um, Dan Andrews advice. And we're just worried that the advice that's coming through isn't making a lot of sense. Like exactly what you're saying, that it's not clear. It's not um, a black and white advice. It's very up and down. So one that we're getting asked a lot about is alcohol. So alcohol is open um, as an essential service. And we're shaking our heads when we've got someone like you that's been in business so long, that's following the guidelines doing something that's um, as isolated as mowing a lawn and doing something like cleaning and hazardous goods cleaning where you're actually helping the stop of the spread of this disease. Yep, that's exactly right. It's an absolutely lunatic thing. You're a hundred times more likely to get infected going and buying grog. And not yep. only that, but I have to understand is why is buying grog an essential service to the public 
Whereas helping an old lady to clear her gutters or her past so she doesn't chip over and break her lip, why is that not important? We do a huge amount of work for NDIS clients, elderly people who cannot do things for themselves. Children are forbidden to go and help them. We're a very important part of their lives, keeping them safe and healthy. At zero risk to them, zero risk to us. Why is that not important, but going to buy grog is important? Buying takeaway food is important. Why? Yep. What, what is the premier's priorities? Yeah, and that's exactly why we wanted to get you on because you're such an iconic business. Everyone who uh, lives in Melbourne, lives in Victoria, even around Australia, I did work for you guys at one stage. I did some photography for Jim's antennas. So mm -hmm. we know your business, we know your brand, and when there's so much disruption and everything's upside down, those iconic brands and those people that you trust are the ones you turn to. And particularly, I feel for the elderly generations that are throughout the suburbs, oh, right. yes. they lean on you guys so heavily. And I feel like, um, as you say, these mowing of the lawns, the pest control, the cleaning services, they're essential. They're essential above and beyond any of these other ones that are slipping through. And it makes me wonder, you know, alcohol has large tax brackets. So there's a lot of money being made there. Yeah. And are these decisions being made for the health and welfare of the public? Or are they just being made for the what's going to make them more money and have less pain for the people at home. And exactly. that's, and, that's and, why we're worried. And how much is the political contributions they're making to the Labor Party? That's what I don't know. The same thing with the, with the, um, the quarantine. That was all based on the mates of the Labor Party. How much money can you give us? We'll put you in charge of quarantine. Nice, juicy thing. That was the cause of this infection. It's, yeah. it's a political pull. Now, the trouble is lawnmowers, gardeners, cleaners, those kind of people, they don't have any pull. They don't have any say. They're little guys. They're not going to contribute millions of dollars to the Labor Party. So, of course, because who, who cares about them? The fact that yep. they – and I hear such heart-rending stories. People on temporary visas who can't get any access, who are down to their last dollar, can't feed their family. I get this all the time. And I've yep. had people – most people who contacted me actually have been solidly in favor. And most of them are not actually our franchisees. They're people – who are small business owners who are simply saying the Premier doesn't care. He doesn't care what's happened to us. This is disastrous for us. This is terrible. And they're hurting so bad. And you hear these stories and it's heartrending. Yeah, for sure. And the other thing I did pick up, and I don't follow mainstream media, I try to stay away from it, particularly at the moment, because I think mm. there's a lot of fear mongering happening, happening at the moment. And really, people want to go about their business. They want to continue socially distancing. People are aware, and people are trying to do the right thing. But each stage of this lockdown is killing the economy. It's actually really hurting people. The suicide rates are going up. We're starting to see the figures for those. And Ch it's Child businesses, abuse, as I say. Domestic yeah. violence depression, yep. All, yep. all going through the roof. Yes, there is a cost to what they're doing. And when the yep. actual benefit is so tiny as it is yep. something like the mowing gardening industry, then have a sense of balance for heaven's sake. Yeah, because I've met a lot of your franchisees and the, a lot of them are family people, of course. So they've got a family. Yeah. A lot of them have young families. Their sole incomes a lot of the time. And they work there. Uh, sorry, I shouldn't swear, but they work hard. They get out there and they do the job. They're no fuss. Um, I've seen the way and all the policies and how it works within the gyms group. And they're amazing people. And I think we as Australians need to make a bit of a stand here without going outside the law, but we need to make a stand. So I did see in the media that you were looking at perhaps pursuing legal action. Um, uh, is that something you're still looking to do? Yes, yeah. We, we have felt compelled. The government's leaned on us so hard that we're actually stopping our mowing guys in Metropolitan Melbourne. There's nothing we can do about it. They're just going to make it so life so difficult and unpleasant for our people that yeah. we can't continue. But I'm not giving up this fight. This is outrageous what they're doing. This is breach yeah. of their own laws. This is just arbitrary rule by whim. Nobody knows. You talk to your yeah. state MP and ask them what the guidelines are. They haven't got a clue. This is all no. based on, on whatever the Premier thinks from, from minute to minute, blurts out something, that now becomes a principle. Don't worry about the law, don't worry about the, the guidelines, just, just say whatever you feel like and, and, and you couldn't give us stuff for, what, for the damage you're doing. It's an appalling yeah. thing. This is an absolute shambling incompetent competent of, a, of a Premier. The only thing he's good at is politics. Yeah, I agree 100%. I mean, we know the figures of the testing that's been done in Victoria. 0.00067% of people have come back positive. The people that are passing away, and, and I'm sad and I'm sorry that there are people dying from this disease, but there, 142 of them have been in nursing homes out of 200 deaths in eight months. So it's about the level of um, lockdown that you need to do for the impact that it's going to have on personal lives going forwards and livelihoods. And I think 
I myself wanted to just thank you for making a stand. We are putting it out there to businesses. We're putting it out there to doctors and nurses. If you think it doesn't look quite right, say something. Like, you need to have that gut check and say, is this right? Is it fair? And if you don't think it is, speak up. What infuriates me too is that he shuts down the entire industry, tens of thousands of people losing their livelihood, and yet when 10,000 people want to demonstrate in the city, that's fine, that's okay, yep. even though it's known as a massive source of infection. And, and yep. the, the quarantine bungle, everything they've done stupidly and wrong, they don't, they don't um, make people have tests, for example. That's okay, if you don't want to have a test, we'll, we won't test you. They don't enforce the, the, the rules. I mean, the things that really would help, they don't do, but they're quite happy to throw tens of thousands of Australians out of work, basically because they haven't got any political pull, whereas the people the Labour Party listens to are those who've got pull and they're going to give them money, and that's what it's all about. I think it's, it's shameful. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I think you're pretty much spot on. Um, I think that was about all that I've got to talk about. I was just going to say we, we do have legal teams working. I'm sure you've got your own guys in hand. Um, if any of your workers or anyone want to um, pop onto our channels or anything like that and have a chat, we've got some really great support groups, counselling groups and things like that as well. Um, myself and the group that I work with, the United Collective, we wanted to say a big thank you to you. I think you're doing Australia proud by making this stance. It's not a big stance, but it's saying we don't think this is right. And I think um, hearing your voice and hearing you come from that spot has actually inspired a lot of other small businesses to say, you know, what exactly is going on here. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Good to talk to you. Okay, thanks, Jim. See you.